in the previous tutorial, we covered how to use the copy to method to copy a range of data along with all of its conditional formatting and data validation from one range to another, whether it be on the same sheet tab or a separate sheet tab. Now, if you have already been playing around with this method, you might have already discovered that row heights are not carried across. Now in Google Apps Scripts, copying across row heights can be a tricky thing and also can be fairly process costly for some reason. And to be perfectly honest, there is no good way of dealing with this. One approach I did test in preparation for this video was to use the advanced services. However, I found that if we have a row that is just set automatically to let's say resize a row when it's set to fit to data then the advanced service doesn't recognize the fit to data there and will cause problems so we have to do it the way we're about to in a moment now this tutorial comes with a starter sheet which you can grab in the link in the description below and the starter sheet here also has a bit of starter code once you're ready come back and we will crack on Okay, you're back. So head over to extensions and app scripts and you should see something a little bit like this. Okay, let's just explain the layout and what's going on at the moment. First, we've got two global variables. The first one is this range of A1 to A20, which is from here all the way down to here. And I've just put a couple of extra little rows in here to indicate that these are standard rows. We've set the sheet name for the source data to home, which is this home tab here. We've got three examples in this tutorial and the first one I've already written for you. So let me explain what's going on. So in this eg1 runsies, we have a constant destination sheet name that is equal to ex1 or ex1 here. And then it calls a copy data function here containing the destination sheet name. So when this copy data destination sheet name, this should be familiar to you. We first call the spreadsheet using spreadsheet app, get active spreadsheet. And then from that, we need to get the source range, which is going to be spreadsheet, get sheet by name, which is our global sheet name here. And then we're going to get the range, which is that global range there. Then we need to find the destination sheet, and that's going to be fed from this destination sheet name from SS, get sheet by name. Then we get the destination range. So the destination range is all you really need to do for a copy and paste or using the copy to method is have this starting cell. So we are just going to say get range A1, which will mean everything will start in the top left hand corner here. You could put that anywhere you wanted and change that as you need. Okay, so once we grabbed all our concept variables, we call the source range and we use copy to, and that will make a copy of the destination range. And let's just explain that and hide this for now let's go ahead and give it a, a run for example one and i'm going to hit run now and let's head over to example one on our sheet so you can see the magic unfold of course after authorizing the sheet for the first time cool so if, as you can see on the left hand side the rows haven't been catered for and the columns haven't been catered for but as we learned in the previous tutorial I'll unhide this, we can use the source range copy to destination range and the extra parameter, two parameters, spreadsheet app copy paste type paste column width enumerator and set that to false. So I'll rerun this now. So let's go ahead and just delete this one out. And let's rerun. And there we go. So we've got our column widths, we've got our formatting, and we've got all our text or our data copied it into this new location. However, our rows are missing. So how are we going to handle this? Well, let's start off by handling a single row so we can understand the basics of this process. So let's go back to our homepage here. And we've got this example two runsies, and that's going to take the destination sheet name, the copy data, just like we had up top here, and we've got one extra function this time, and it's the example two, uh, get set rows. And that's going to take the destination sheet name. Okay, so as it says, it's going to get and set the data from a single row. So let's create a couple of constant variables at the top. So let's say const spreadsheet ss equals spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. And then we want to grab the source sheet. And that's going to be ss.get sheet by name. And that will be our global 
sheet name up here. Now we need to retrieve a row, or more accurately, retrieve the row height of a row. Okay, so to do that, we're going to create another constant variable called source row height. And that's going to be equal to source sheet. And then there is a method in source sheet or in the sheet spreadsheet app class called get row height, which we are going to grab. Now we need to define the row position. So let's grab this row 10 just for our example here. So it's a nice big and, and tall row height here. Okay, and we can always console log that so you can see what that looks like. Source row height. And then we want to set the row height in the new destination. Let's start off by setting the first row. Keep it simple. We'll say const dest sheet. Oh, dest range, dest sheet. This time. And then we'll say spreadsheet dot get sheet by name. And that's our dest sheet name and then let's just say dest sheet dot set row height here okay and what row do we want to set well we just want to set row number 10 like we did with the other one and then we can say source row height cool let's go ahead and save that and this is going to go into our example two and change to example two and hit run. Cool. And you could see once everything was loaded in that the uh, row 10, the developer height was updated. We got that sorted out and we also console log the height for that row, which is 81 pixels. Okay, so another thing that is going to be important for us in a moment is to be able to apply this to a number of ranges. Another thing we can do here is say dest sheet dot set row heights and note here that we've added the s on the end so for multiple heights so our start row integer we've got a start row integer now and an end row integer so let's say we want to start this on row one and put, make this go all the way down to row 11. we'll put these same wide pixels in every one of these rows just for our quick example so let's go in and say source row height and hit save okay so let's just uh, hide that and we will go ahead and to 21 centimeters by default this back or somewhere around here it'll sort itself out we'll hit save and now let's hit run okay you can see in one big block that all these rows are now this 81 pixels all right, so we've got two ideas and two things that we can possibly use in a moment. Let's go down to our third example. And we, what we'll do is try and set the height for each one of these. Now, one of the problems with uh, the way Google Apps Scripts handles this is that it will make a call to the sheet each time, but it'll try and batch these and set the rows individually one after the other, which can be fairly process intensive and slow the process down significantly. So this is not recommended on large data sets. But let's go ahead and do it anyway. So in this example, again, we want the destination sheet name. And then we are going to grab our these two constant variables here, the spreadsheet and the source sheet. I'm going to whack them in. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. And then we also want the range this time as well. So we're going to say const range is equal to ss.get range. And what are we going to put in there? We'll put in our range. Cool. That'll be useful for us in a moment. So now we need to get a list of all the row heights for the range. So simply we could iterate through each of the rows in the home tab over here and get each one of the row heights and then add them into the new location each one of the time. Now this is going to be process intensive, making it quite slow and not recommended for large groups of data or large sets of data but we'll give it a go first and then we'll find a way to make it a bit more efficient so first let's create our iterator so for let i equal zero and then we want the 
want i to be less than we want it to stop when the range dot get height so that's the height of rows within the range selected range and then we want to iterate uh, by one so add one each time now we want to get the row start and we can do that by using the range get row so let's put it up here so we're not calling range get row each time we iterate through so we can say const range start is equal to range dot get row then we're saying const row start is going to be equal to the iterator plus the range start so now we can get the row height on each iteration. So we can say row height is equal to source sheet dot get row height. And what's the row position? Well, that's the row start. Now we could just go ahead and then set the row height of the target range. To do that up here, we could go const dest sheet equals spreadsheet dot get sheet by name again and that's going to be there's sheet name you know so for us we're using we're going to use the same range start because it's going to go in this a1 slot just like the source slot here this a1 uh, if it wasn't we might have had to put in a second argument to say where the location that we were heading in okay so let's set that value now so we could say test sheet dot set row height yeah and that's what's the row position well that's going to be row start and we've got our row start but we also need the height which is going to be row height okay i think we've got everything now For some reason i didn't make that a constant variable which is a bit silly let's make that a constant variable we'll hit save looks prettier i've just added an underscore at the end of this function here just so it's not included in the list of executions so let's go to example three and hit run now now you can see every single time we've hit a row it's been expanded out really 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 slowly so it's not entirely efficient so let's look at another way of handling this just a tiny bit more efficiently. So what we'll do first is we'll put this destination sheet down the bottom here because we're not going to include it in our iteration and we're not going to keep this now. But I think we'll keep everything else. But what we want to do is get a list of heights. So let's head back to our home page here. We want to find all the heights that have matching row values. So these two should be the same. Perhaps these two are the same, but if they're not, we'll make them the same. Or a bit of consistency here we'll do the same for these two as well just so i can show you the example i think everything else is pretty good there and let's make all these three the same as well good okay so we've got items here that are matching we can put them in a set row heights now with that particular range this will be on its own but this will be a range that we can set this will be on its own this will be a range we can set on its own and on its own uh, let's redo this function to to make it just a tiny bit more efficient okay so i've made some notes here but we'll head to them in a minute up the top here we're also going to put in a let variable here to store in our ranges and they're going to be stored as an array of objects. So we'll say let row height. And that's going to be equal to an empty array for now. But it's going to contain an array of objects with a row start num rows and a row height. So I've made some text down here, and if the current item is not the zeroth and the previous row height match, just add one to the number of rows for the previous item. So what are we going to do here? So we will say if i does not equal zero, so the number of rows for that one will start off with one, so we don't need to count, and the row height is equal to row heights and that's calling this here oh that should be row heights my apologies row heights 
is equal to row height dot length minus one. So we're looking, we want to look at the last item in our row heights array. And inside that item of objects, we want to look at the row height. Okay, so if we're not on the zeroth item in the iterator and the row height is equal to the row heights uh, dot length minus one, then we just want to update the last item in the row heights array by one. So we'll say row heights, row height dot length minus one again. And this time around, we want to get the we want to add one to the num row, so we'll say num rows plus plus. Else, what do we want to do? We want to push a new object to the end of the row heights array. So we will say row heights dot push. And let's add our object now. And that's going to take a row start or take the row start we're currently on followed by the num rows and that will be number one because it's a brand new item that has no matching height and then we'll have the row height cool now just for a bit of fun let's just console log that uh, row heights so you can see what's going on there before we wrap up this function okay so finally in our last bit, we need to set these rows. So we need to set the row heights for the destination range. This is where we've got our destination sheet already. And now we're going to go, so we'll iterate through the row heights now. Row heights dot for each row. We'll make a little arrow function now. And we will say dest sheet dot set row heights this time. To save us a bit of processing power. And what do we want to get from this? We want to grab the row dot start row, start row integer, and then the row dot num rows. And then lastly, the height. So row dot height. There we go. Let's hit save. And let's clear out this number example three again. So delete. Make everything 21. Cool. And run example three. Oh, we made a little error here. Can't read row height. Let's have a look. Right, that should be row heights. I think I made the same mistake there. Good, we hit save. Run again. Okay, so we've got our list of row starts, num rows. So that's pretty good. Oh, we should probably clear this out. And then we'll address the error. Got a null here, and that's for this one here. And that's because it should be where it start. That's it safe. Give it one final go. Cool. And you can see now how fast that was in iterating through because it, it could iterate in blocks instead of individual rows. Still not entirely the fastest thing in the world, but it's going to save you if you've got thousands and thousands of rows, but some of those rows uh, adjacent to each other happen to be the same height. A little bit of a tricky process to add in the heights and kind of counterintuitive what you might expect, particularly considering how simple the copy to method is, but we got there in the end. You can use this and recycle it and update this script to how you need for your own projects. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.